On this investigation by Evidence Paranormal, the team travels to Alton, Illinois to visit the haunted home of the late Henry Guest McPike. All with the purpose of capturing their own paranormal activity. But will they find more than they bargained for? In the dark? History has told us of how the city of Alton, Illinois may possibly be one of the most haunted cities in America. One such location in Alton with claims of paranormal activity was built in the 19th century. It's called McPike Mansion. In 2012, I took my group there to investigate this mysterious building. What we experienced was more than what we expected. Located atop one of the highest points in Alton on 15 acres of land, construction began in 1869 on a building owner Henry Guest McPike called Mount Lookout and was eventually completed in 1871. Made with red brick and tall white pillars, the structure contained 16 rooms, including a vaulted wine cellar. Being a serious horticulturalist, he grew extensive gardens with orchards, shrubs, and rare trees. McPike served two terms as the mayor of Alton and later also served as a librarian of the Alton Southern Illinois Horticultural Society in the late 1880s. He passed away in 1910. In 1925, the mansion was purchased by a Paul A. Lashinger, who lived there and cared for it until he died in or around 1951. It's not unusual that many apparitions have been seen in and around this property. Not long after we arrived, we were given a tour around the perimeter of the building, and even told of a couple of child-sized headstones located in the back. Since 1994, the mansion's been owned by Sharon and George Ludke, longtime residents of Alton. Here now are the two unidentifiable headstones we were told about. But whoever they belong to, could they still be here? <laughs> the claims of childlike laughter in the woods say yes. Before entering the building, we said the St. Michael's Prayer for Protection. With the owner's permission, we began by setting up an unmanned infrared camcorder on the first floor at the base of the entryway staircase. After several minutes of preparation, 
we were finally able to leave it unattended. Now all we had to do was wait. With one half of the group inside setting up, it made sense that the other half investigate outdoors. Probing the grounds by the headstones, they listened for the sound of children's laughter in which there have been claims of. During their 30 minutes, they performed an EVP session and even used dowsing rods. But after much effort and exposure to the cold, they wisely decided to return inside. When a building or a geographical location give off no proven man-made or natural electrical energy, then what remains, if possible, could be that of the afterlife. A spirit is believed to be the energy that leaves a person's body after they die. Here now is when we were checking for baseline readings and setting up in the cellar. Of course our safety was never in question, because right above our heads was our guardian bat, Igor. If high EMF is found, it can cause false equipment readings, and in extreme cases, it has been known to cause headaches, rashes, paranoia, and even hallucinations. But after checking baseline readings, no EMF levels were found. However, at the night's end, we found out that all of our full spectrum video that we had taken had been corrupted. They act of curious spirits more than likely, but we still had infrared footage we could use. Everything you're about to see has been edited down from several hours of collected infrared footage. It was now time to officially start our indoor investigation. Jay and I started by performing an EVP session in a corner room down the hall from the wine cellar. EVPs, also known as electronic voice phenomenon, are believed to be the voices of the dead speaking Already. to the living. Oh, I got a milligauss. Point two. Zero. It's not this. Is it this wire? No. I had a... I had a point two. Are you just standing in front of me? Why don't you come on up and touch this millimeter I have in my hand. Just touch the little antenna on the top. Almost the entire time we were in there, I had the feeling that we weren't alone. Slide up and let us know you're still here. Paul, if you're here, can you answer? Unfortunately, our video cameras cannot detect the light from our devices very well. At that very moment, I actually Anybody? felt like somebody was standing next to me. It just kept feeling like something cold was right next to my ear cutting out the sound around me. It was a cold that was not in motion. If it wasn't for the fact that I knew Jay was standing in front of me to my left, I would have thought it was him. Can anybody leave a message?
Is there anybody here that can just maybe say hello? That time I heard something, but I couldn't prove it. Jay didn't hear it himself, so... Nobody's here. Doesn't matter, you're still special. We're still here to say hi. We're still here because we respect who you are. After only a few minutes, I decided that since we could hear the voices from the other members in the next room, it was time to move on. Okay. If something was there and knew that I was trying to communicate with it, maybe it would follow me into the next room. Earlier that evening when we went dark, we decided to engage the full spectrum lighting. Something we feel is better than infrared. Unfortunately, the only full spectrum video that we have is this one. Using natural camera lighted photos, this is what we saw. Despite the condition of the building, we could only imagine the history that these walls actually witnessed. If only the energy in them would speak to us. After Jay and I ended the EVP session in the room across the hall, we joined the other members in the wine cellar. Apparently, the girls were having the same kind of luck we were having. If, in fact, there was a spirit that was with us, hopefully it followed. Jay and I had finished up with our EVP session and returned to join the others in the wine cell. Oh, do you like my watch? I saw you light it up. Are you checking out that watch? Henry, I have a question. cigar. Do you smoke? Now, if you just left a message and we can't hear it yet, can you at least light that up to let me know that you did leave a message? It was quite obvious we were in the presence of something intelligent. Can you make this light up in my hand? I was trying to see if I can get the spirit to make the K2 light up. Are you a male or a female? If you're a male, make the K2 meter in Nathan's hand light up. If you're a female, light the rim pot on the ground. Sarah? 
Sarah was a domestic servant who lived in the mansion on the third floor. When I count to three, please make that light up and make a sound at the same second I say the number three. Ready? One, two, three. Despite several periods where they didn't respond, when they did, they responded on cue. She likes you. Do you like Jay. Nathan? Oh my god. Yeah, they like Nathan. The fact that they responded so fast to Mary's simple question about me left me totally speechless. That was definitely cool. Yeah, that was good stuff. One little unseen fact that you cannot see is that we're using a laser pointer through this investigation. However, what it couldn't detect, the melmeter could. of an activity. Are you still here? Is this Sarah? Are you still here? There you are. Can you say hi to Jeremy there? light in here. Looks like it went dimmer. As soon as members were making claims of feeling extremely cold, Mary pulled out her thermal scanning gun and began checking for cold spots around them. Are you, are you trying to enter people to find out who they are? That makes people cold. It's okay as long as you're doing it for a reason. Feelings of extreme cold, or cold spots as they are most commonly known, are signs of a spirit's presence, <laughs> that they may be drawing She's energy from the air or people around to be able to manifest themselves or communicate. Uh -oh. Look at this. Look at that. Whoa. Hi, Sarah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Hi, Sarah. 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 Hi,
Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you a ghost with a sense of humor. source of power to draw from. Not unusual since we're made up of the same type energy. Do you like it when people come visit you and, and treat you nice? Because we sure appreciate your responses. Is it okay with you if we... I'm sorry, go ahead. Apparently somebody on the other side wants Mary's attention. Like it was. Yeah. That was what it was. Can you do it again? One more time. It's believed there are two types of haunts that can inhabit a location a residual haunt and an intelligent haunt. A residual haunt is nothing more than an echo or an imprint left behind of someone that cannot interact with you. A kind of visual loop, you might say that repeats itself at specific times of the day or night. The other is commonly known as an intelligent haunt. It does acknowledge your presence and, oh yeah, it can interact with you. to come back make that green light come on please and then make the rim pod go off and we'll bring it. We will. Talk into that little device right there and tell Jeremy what we can bring. Is there something pretty we can bring you? Do you like flowers? Do you like shiny things? If there is anything that we can bring for you that, that would make you happy, just say it as loud as you can into that red light. And unfortunately, nobody heard that.
maybe a photograph of someone. But we would need to know who it is. You know, I was kind of skeptic big time for a while. Everything I've seen and everything that this is making me believe 100% again. Because I just haven't seen anything in a while. I was earlier. I was I'm earlier, and I'm not a cold person. Um, but like my toes Like I'm cold, but it's the it's every now and then just cold chilling chills. Well, it is freezing outside. You still here? Sarah, can you show us you're still here? Do you like Bach? Do you like Mozart? Once again, unnoticed. Are you standing over there by Julie? Yes. Oh, nice. We like you. Can I take your picture? I'm going to take a picture of Julie. As I said earlier, Infrared cameras cannot pick up the light from a laser pointer. But digital photography sure can. It's also 46 degrees for the two of you. I'm going to take another picture. I hope that's okay. Are you somebody who lived in this building? Or are you one of the member of the McPike family? Oh, you definitely are. Has the battery gone out in the red pod? Is that where you're lighting up the YouTube? Touch it real quick just to see. No. Better is not dead. Did you see what Jay did? Can can you do that too? Your turn. It's your show. And we're your audience. Just went right over here. It likes you. <laughs> Earlier, Mary was outdoors snapping photos over the cellar entrance. But one photo she had taken had caught her eye. A mist. Something with a face in it. Could that be an apparition trying to form? Could it be Henry? We all have people, family, on. Do you know any of them? Like my grandpa? He was a politician. During the time you were alive. Richard Parks Bland? Or of them? 
Richard Parks Bland was a Missouri congressman who sponsored the Bland-Allison Act, which forced the U.S. Treasury to circulate the silver dollar. He lived from 1835 to 1899. Bland, Missouri was named in his honor as well as a statue erected in his memory in the nearby town of Lebanon. So, I'm just really eager, I really, you would really so convince me, if you make that light up right now, to let me know that it's all right, that you, you personally want us to come back. Can you make that light up? Can you? Give it everything you got, sir. Over here, so. What was that? Hello? A loud slam sound came from outside the cellar or from upstairs, as it sounded to me. The guys immediately went in search while the girls really went in the cellar. Being a former police officer, it was understandable that Jeremy's skills would kick in. He immediately went in search in case we had trespassers in the building. That was upstairs. Yeah. What if it was the front door? While down there, Jeremy discovered a large wooden board resting upright against the brick wall. He manually bumped the board to try to recreate the sound hey. we had heard. The door? Listen, what? Do it again. Does that sound like it? Yeah. It's just like a single thump. Sound like it's yeah, like a, a more of a fist kind of. But if that's where the sound originated from, who bumped it? Hmm. Here now is a triple play comparing each sound. You be the judge. Meanwhile, back in the wine cellar. Real, real serious here, sir, ma'am, whoever is still here. Was that you making that sound? That was you? Was that your way of trying to send a message? Okay, send it one more time, light that up on the floor. Despite all of our efforts, we received no more responses through any of our devices for the remainder of the evening. It was quite obvious by now that whatever we'd been communicating with all evening was gone. So after six long hours and the increasing cold, I made a decision to end the investigation. Okay, well, sir, we're all cold and tired and hungry. <laughs> As you can hear. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it for speaking with us, communicating with us, and we hope to, to be able to come back and, and speak with you again. <laughs> yeah, it's warm. Yeah. We thank you very much. You have had a very good time visiting with you. When it's summertime, you can make us really cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, before leaving the property, we performed another St. Michael's prayer of protection to prevent anything from attaching itself to anyone 
or our equipment and leaving with us. As we were packing up, that's when we discovered that the full spectrum files that we were going to transfer to our laptop were corrupted. And to make matters worse, we discovered during a review that we had not caught a single EVP. Afterwards, we stayed up late to review the infrared video footage. Despite not being a big believer in them, we discovered what could possibly be an orb that we had caught on infrared camcorder in front of the staircase. In fact, it appeared while we were setting up the camera. Have a look for yourself. Okay. Here's what I did with all the cameras. Here's, here's what I did with all the cameras, guys. Didn't see it? Well, why don't you have another look? This time, I'll show it to you in a triple play. Watch closely. Definitely not an insect, and there was no dust floating around anywhere to be seen. Conclusion? Considering everything we experienced the entire evening, we're going back. McPike Mansion, an undeniable resource of paranormal possibilities. History again has spoken to a small group of believers. We entered unsure, and we leapt even more curious. Our efforts to speak to the afterlife was uncomfortable and cold, but the rewards, no matter how vague, were well worth finding. So in the end, we went in looking for answers, but only came out with more questions. I guess we'll simply have to wait and see what happens when we return.